How are we doing team? Yancey Culp here, Spartan SDX coach, program manager for DecaFit from the creators of Spartan, owner founder of YanceyKent.com, all things online, OCR training, running training, functional fitness training. Today we're talking about improving your running mechanics. Hope to give you some basic pointers that will help you during this challenging time to possibly improve your running mechanics. I have, I've had the wonderful opportunity to work with a lot of great coaches over the years. I get a chance to travel the country and coach running clinics with my good friend, Ben Pena, uh, my high school coach. Love him to death. Such a motivator. Um, great running coach. Love talking running mechanics. Uh, my college coach had a wonderful opportunity to receive a scholarship, University of North Texas. Uh, had a wonderful opportunity to work with Richard Diaz, great friend of mine. He has a wonderful way of quickly and easily communicating basic running mechanic improvement demos. Uh, we're going to go over some things that, that I've, I use at the start of every single Yancey Camp workout. We're going to keep it really basic so everybody can implement this. I, if I don't say this 10 times, I'm doing you a disservice. Everything that I teach you, for most of you, you need to take this nice and slow. You can't just throw away what you're doing now and implement this 100% because you may have been running a certain way for a long time. I'm gonna show you some great basics that will help reduce injury, reduce common running injuries, and improve your running efficiencies. Very important, but you gotta take it slow for many of you. When I travel the country, one, the first thing I'll do, if I say I have a group of 50 people, I'll put you on video. You can learn a lot from video. Okay, I have you run past my camera with your shoes on, and then I have you take your shoes off. And taking those shoes off, I'm not an advocate of barefoot running, but periodic barefoot running can tell you so much, and it's also great for foot health. More on that later. Okay, people run past with their shoes. A lot of people wear these big old, they got the silly posturpedic mattress under the shoe. For people with poor mechanics, what that does, that buys you some time, but eventually it all catches up with you. You see a lot of this. You see a lot of this overstriding, reaching, brake stomping, heel striking, landing unbalanced. I'm not exaggerating with this. I could send you a thousand, a thousand videos of people landing like this. Now, you take the shoe off. Let's say we're on this uh, hard surface like we have right now. Even dirt, oh, just about anywhere we run, it can get really hard. The brain, but and again, I haven't coached them on anything yet. The moment the shoes go away, they take those mattresses off their feet, all of a sudden, they're landing here. Let's talk anatomy. Okay, first of all, I want you to see this, this midfoot, forefoot section right here. And then we're gonna talk about, right, we're gonna talk about right here first though. When you land with that big overstride and that heel drives in the ground, I'm 165. Think about if you're 200, 250, whoa, that's bad news. So you have a, you have a tibia bone, coming down that lands on, on the talus, okay? So when you heel strike, these OCR races, we're out in the deep grass, we're hitting rocks and roots and whatnot, that ankle's gonna roll inwards or outwards, okay? I got a little rock here. Let's say you, let's say you heel strike into this rock. Well, that foot, that foot wants to roll outwards and sometimes inwards. Now, little light bulb moment here. When you land right here, midfoot or forefoot, I'm not gonna say you gotta do one of there's, 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 there's Great mechanics of both, okay? But when you land there, you are landing on over 100 muscles, ligaments, joints, and tendons, this nice malleable surface. Let's say you run through that grass, or you hit a root or a rock. Now, we mold around it. Very little occurs right here at that tibia and talus, very little ankle rolling. There's no specific research out there, but I can almost personally guarantee you that ankle sprains are less with people that do not overstride heel strike and land with this braking action here. Just a basic anatomy lesson there to help you out. Okay, so we're gonna talk basic corrections. I've already talked about some of them. Um, you do overstride and you stomp on the brakes and you heel strike when you're getting way out there and you are reaching. That's inefficient. It technically is inefficient. I'm gonna go more on that. I would say almost not debatable. Um, when you get more of a, when you look at elite level runners, a lot of our high level obstacle course racers, go look at Kipchoge, all the, most of the great runners, I'm not gonna say all, most of the great runners land, give or take somewhere in this range. Right here, with a little bit of negative shin angle, four foot strike, a mid foot strike, or a very slight heel strike. 
you are not going to see anybody in the Olympics or any other high level running doing this. But you will see this so often from novice runners, people coming into OCR. Um, there's so many things we can do. I'm going to show you some great demos to help improve this. Okay, ankle sprains reduced, cumbering and running injuries. We talked about that. I'm going to talk a little bit about vertical oscillation. I do have some notes here because I don't think there's any way in the world I would have been able to remember this. Vertical oscillation, this is an important one. Uh, let's take a four-hour marathoner, 160 strides per minute. That's pretty typical. I've shot a lot of people, done a lot of strides per minute calculation. 150s, 160s, is pretty common for people that have a drastic overstride, a heel strike, uh, landing imbalance, reach. Okay, so 240 minutes times 160, that is 38,400 strides in that four-hour marathon. Let's say I have a three inch oscillation, not uncommon to have a three plus inch oscillation. That's up, upward oscillation we'll talk about. Times three inches, that's 115,200 inches up. Let's divide it by 12 so I can give you feet. That's 9,600 feet of up, folks. What does it take to go up? It takes power, it takes muscle, it takes calorie burn. It is inefficient the more we're going up. Okay, let's say we take that same four hour marathon. When you, when you stop overstriding and hill striking here, Okay, you stop reaching and breaking. Your stride per minute is going to go up some. That's a good thing, by the way. I'm not going to give you a specific number. I don't believe in a specific number. Let's just say you land at 175 versus 160. Um, <clears throat> so 240 minutes times 175, that's 42,000 strides now. Let's say we cut it in half, the oscillation, to 1.5 inches. That's 63,000 inches. Let's divide that by 12. Now we have only 5,200 feet of up. That is 4,350 feet of savings going up. That's not too far from a mile of unnecessary up that we have saved. Big news, ding, ding, great stuff. Efficiency improves. You know, that, that four hour marathon now is, let's say it's a, a 340 marathon at the same heart rate. Or, or let's say your, your, your beast or your ultra beast or your sprint, I don't care what distance you run, everything is more efficient. These corrections will translate out on course. We love the fact that injuries slowly go away, but we really love that this improves and translates out on course, my friends, energy savings, injury reduction, more efficient. Okay, let's talk about how to improve. I'm gonna give you the basic, uh, the basic ABC drill that I put in front of every single Yancey camp workout. We're gonna try to slowly get away from the heel striking. Now, very, very important, this is the second, third time I've said it, you've got to take it slow and easy. You may have been running for 40 years with this heel strike. Been on that big Sealy Posturepedic mattress, been buying time. You only run 15, 20 miles a week, so you've been kind of buying time. You haven't had any disastrous injuries. You go out and try to get 50, 60, 70 miles a week, and you're getting, you're getting way out here, it's going to be a disaster. Trust me. So what do we do to improve to slowly curb and get away from that overstriding, hill striking, reaching, breaking? We're going to show you the ABC drill that I put in front of all my workouts. This is A. Okay, we're landing on our... Our forefoot here, just kind of marching in place, letting that heel, gotta let the calves, gastroc and soleus unwrap a little bit, let them relax and that heel must touch every time. We're gonna go into some B pace now, all right? And then we're just gonna fall a little bit into our C. Guess what, now we're running. We are running, you Forrest Gump fans. I watched that movie recently with my kids. They loved it. It's long, but man, it's a great one. Great, if, even for you runners out there, it's a great movie. There's a few earmuff and eye muff uh, parts for my nine year old, but it was a good, good show. So again, A, B, and then C, we just fall. So this is all about giving you a workout. The ABC work is a workout. I want you putting it before every single workout. Just three or four minutes. I don't want you overdoing it. So Yancey, what is D? D is we call motor skill development pace. How fast can you run while you're keeping these C mechanics without going into that reach? Overstride, landing on balance, braking, heel striking motion that we used to have. That you're still gonna have in some of the later portions of your workouts or in your races. We're not gonna snap our fingers and make all these corrections overnight, but your D pace is how fast can I run without reaching? A, B, C, and D pace for me is my full race pace, as fast as I can run. If I'm, if I'm running a mile, I'm running a Spartan Super, I'm running an Ultra, whatever distance, 
or at 800 meters, I'm not overstriding and, and hill striking. So that's my race pace is my deep pace, motor skill development pace. You, a lot of you will find your, your deep pace slowly improving. Now let's say you're training for world championships later in the year, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> and you're, you're like, you, you're, you're an age group or an elite and you, you can't just say, well, I can't stop doing what I've been doing. You don't have to. Uh, you just, you start working in the A, B, C, D mechanics and that slow transformation will happen. I need to say it again. I need to say it five more times. Make sure you let that heel come down and touch. Very, very important. You know, a sprinter, we talk, I do a lot of speed coaching as well. We want a stiff ankle during that acceleration. We don't want the, the collapse because that's a waste of time. We're running thousands of strides. We've got to let the calf open up and let that heel briefly touch. Some of you, you may only be running, you may have just gotten started in running. You're running five miles a week, 10 miles. You're gonna be able to replace a lot more of that percentage of running with this uh, C pace and D pace. So you just gotta take it nice and easy. I don't want you calling me a week, sending me a message saying, Yancey, my calves really lit up. That's because you dove in too fast. Okay, so that's A, B, C, D. What can we do to improve? I like, you know, if, you, if you're running on a treadmill or you have some nice gradual heels, it's when, when, you're tra when, you're, when you're slowly transferring in this new running mechanics uh, and you, uh, the heels and treadmill is great, because it's very hard to overstride when you're five, 10, 15%. You're, you know, it's gonna get you up on that, that, that midfoot or forefoot, or, or forefoot, and that's good. So replacing some of your running with maybe five or 10% of the treadmill, um, <clears throat> but just don't overdo it at first because your calves may light up a little bit. Uh, barefoot running, again, not an advocate of, like go out and do a lot of barefoot running, but a couple times a week, three or four minutes, It'll help wake that foot up. The big padded Sealy Posturepedic shoes with the big high heel drop, that big stiletto heel, big cushion under there. The, shoe, the foot kind of falls asleep. You know, we got the big arch support. Not a big fan of too much arch support. We, that arch was designed to be support. So getting out on the on the, on the a, a, a protective a patch of grass or turf where the toes can splay out like they are. My altars right here. We can feel the ground. Get the, get, get the sensory perception of going up to the brain. You feel the ground. That is very important. I also love tire dragging. Why do we love tire dragging? So tire dragging, I've got, an, I've got a lightweight tire here that I'm dragging around. And it's when you have a little bit of resistance, you're not gonna be so inclined to reach. You gotta realize, okay, I gotta get some power in the ground behind me here to pull this tire. Nice and easy pace with your tire drag. No need to get crazy fast with it, but you're also accomplishing a little bit of running specific strength training. You're overloading those exact muscles that we use. We put power in the ground. You're overloading them just a little bit. Walking, uh, zone two, zone three running. That's 99% of how, how I will prescribe the, the tire drag. So those three things will, will help you a little bit. Don't go with a heavy tire. I want a nice lightweight tire just to provide a little bit of resistance. If you're tra training with a partner, you can put one finger on the shirt and just tug, just provide a little bit of resistance. It'll get them off the toe. The brain will say, I gotta get that, uh, that neutral or, or negative shin angle here versus that big reach. Okay, I'm gonna show you a basic uh, verse, some basic versus loop exercises. Great, I've got six different resistances here. We're gonna go with the medium red. When you put them on, make sure you don't step on them. Now, I'm coaching a workout here, versus loop warm up, and it's a great workout also. I'm not going to, I'm not coming into this with a written workout. I wanna show you how quickly and easy it is just to throw something together. It doesn't have to be the same thing every time. We're gonna get some side steps, okay? Keep tension on the band by not letting the feet get closer to the shoulder width. I'm not gonna leave with my toe. Five one way, five the other. We're gonna put some speed to it. Good lateral movements here. We're gonna do around the world. Forward, 45, side, 45, back. Forward, 45, side, 45, back. That's one round. You're gonna give me two. We're gonna get some leg swings. 20 total left, left leg. 20 total right leg, also great for your balance. Working the balance with the lateral swings. 20 here as well, 10 left and 10 right. We're gonna get some monster walks. 
These Versa Loops are great, very inexpensive tools. And I'm gonna finish here with some upper body work. Okay, that was forward, I, should, I, should, I didn't say it, that's forward monster walk here. I don't think I told you what it was. And this is reverse monster walk. Okay, you can also get some speed work. Wake up the central nervous system real quick. Again, don't leave with the toe. And then you're firing here. 20 total. So those five or six exercises I just showed you, give me three or four rounds. Okay, Yancy, how can I use this for full body? I wanna get my upper body. I'm gonna go down to my knees so you can see me here. We're gonna get lat pull downs. Wow, I can work my grip and pull strength here. Back and bicep muscles. I can go to two fingers, little rock climbing grip here. I can go to the side. I can switch which fingers I'm using. I can go up front. I can go into a, a row, a bent row. Okay, now I want you to do 20, uh, 20 of, of those four movements, 20 each, 10 each arm. Now, so that was all back and bicep work, a little bit of grip. How do I work the push, Yancy? The chest, tries, and shoulders. Okay, it's gonna look pretty similar. We're gonna lock here, we're gonna push. This time we're pushing, now we're chest, tries, and shoulders. Okay, all with $2 tool, folks. They travel easy. Now we're working the push. Okay, so great lower body work there, upper body work, and I promise you that I was gonna give you a little bit of a uh, some disco, disco inferno. Let's see if I still have it loaded. Oh yeah, everybody knows Yancy. Yancy likes to tear up the dance floor. Oh yeah, folks. Go disco inferno, you gotta get it. Leave the Versa loop on when you're getting your disco work in. Much love, thank y'all for tuning in. Live, love, laugh, and serve big today, everybody. Be good. Send me some comments down below. I'll spend the next week or so getting them answered. Shoot me private messages, whatever you need. I am here to help rock and roll. Thank you for Spartan, for all you do, helping change 100 million lives. Be good.